tonight, we are learning in just the last few minutes that a federal judge is now refusing to grant Sean Diddy Combs bail. Instead, he's going straight to jail. Following breaking news right now related to music movie, Sean Diddy Combs. For decades, an invite to one of Sean Diddy Combs' infamous parties was a ticket to rub shoulders I can't with imagine the thousands. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not really sure what the baby oil has to do with anything. I don't know where the number of thousand came. Baby oil, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. He has been ready to defend this case since he first found out about this case. Sean John Combs. Better known by many names, Puffy, Puffyardy, PDD, and Simply DD, was born on November 4th, 1969, in Harlem, New York. Raised by single mother Janice Combs after the tragic death of his father, Melvin Combs, who was murdered when Diddy was just two years old, the young son grew up in a world that shaped both his ambition and drive. But how did Sin Combs rise from the streets of Harlem? to become one of the most powerful names in hip-hop, only to end up in a storm of regal battles and scandals that have been facing federal charges today. The story begins at Mount St. Michael Academy, where Diddy earned the nickname Puffy because of his habit of puffing out his chest when angry. After attending Howard University, Shine dropped out to pursue his passion for music. By 19, he had already landed a job as vice president of A&R at Uptown Records, the youngest executive in the industry at the time. In 1993, after being fired from Uptown Record, Diddy found his own label, Bad Boy Entertainment. It would become one of the most influential labels in history of hip hop. It was here that he discovered a young, hungry rapper from Brooklyn named Christoph Wallace, better known as the Notorious B.I.G. The partnership between Diddy and Biggie would prove to be monumental. Together, they transformed East Coast rap, creating hits like Dreezy and Big Popel, which not only dominated the charts, but also defined an era as Bad Boys was rising to the top tension was growing in the streets setting the stage for one of the darkest chapters in hip-hop history, the East Coast-West Coast rivalry. By 1996, the feud between Biggie and Tupac Shakur was at its peak. On March 9, 1997, just six months after Shakur was struck by four rounds fired from a 40 caliber Glock. Biggie was also tragically gunned down in Los Angeles. This moment would forever alter Diddy's career and personal life. The death of Biggie hit Diddy hard. His response? A tribute to his fallen friend, I'll be missing you. The track, featured in Faith Evans and 112, became an international hit topping the billboard charts for 11 weeks but for all the commercial success questions and controversies continued to surround the death of Biggie Smalls some critics even speculated that Diddy may have known more than he let on about the beef that led to Biggie's death Diddy's empire wasn't limited to music in 1998, he launched his clothing line, Thin John, which became a massive success, earning him a Council of Fashion Designers of America, CFDA, award. He also found Bad Boy films and even starred in few movies himself, including his role in A Rising the Sun on Broadway. But just as Diddy was rising to unimaginable heights, scandals began to emerge that threatened to tear down everything he had built. In 1999, Diddy found himself embroiled in a high-profile legal case involving a high nightclub shooting in New York City. On the night of December 27th, a fight broke out and shots were fired, leaving three people injured. Diddy along with his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and rapper Shane were arrested. Though Diddy was acquitted of all the charges, the trial brought a flood of negative attention, with critics questioning whether he was as innocent as he claimed. Shine, on the other hand, wasn't so lucky. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison 
Throughout the 2000s, Diddy continued to release music, but his focus shifted more towards his entrepreneurial ventures. He became the face of Firoc Vodka, and his business dealing only expanded. By 2011, Forbes named him the richest rapper in the world with a net worth of over 500 million US dollars. Today his net worth is around 2 billion US dollars. But success came at a cost. One of Diddy's most persistent critics was none other than 50 Cent. The Queen's rapper and business mogul openly mocked Diddy on numerous occasions, questioning his business ethics and even accusing him of exploiting the death of Biggie for his own gain. In one infamous video, 50 Cent went as far as to call Diddy a thief who robbed his own artist's brain. The tension between Diddy and 50 Cent mirrored the competitive and cutthroat nature of the hip-hop industry. While the public feud made headlines, it was far from Diddy's biggest problem. Diddy's personal life was also filled with turmoil. He fathered six children with several different women, including Kim Porter, who tragically passed away in 2018. He had high profile relationships with the likes of K Cassie Ventula and Jennifer Lopez, but the two ended in scandals. In 2023, shocking allegations surfaced from Diddy's ex girlfriend, Cassie. She accused him of rape and physical abuse, alleging years of control and manipulation. Though the case was quickly settled out of court, it opened the floodgates for more accusations, casting a dark shadow over Diddy's once celebrated career. But the most damning chapter in Diddy's life would unfold in 2024 in March. Federal agents raided his properties as part of an investigation into human trafficking and drug theory. The investigation led to his arrest in September 2024 on charges of running a criminal enterprise involving sex trafficking, forced labor, bribery, and more. Diddy, now 54 years old, faces the possibility of spending the rest of his life behind bars. He pleaded not guilty but was denied bail and as the case continues to unfold. The reaction from the hip-hop community has been mixed. Many fans were shocked to see the mogul who once ruled the music world with an iron fist brought down by such horrifying charges. Others including long-time critics like 50 Cent were less surprised, suggesting that Diddy's downfall was inevitable given the controversy that followed him for decades. As of now, Diddy sits in jail awaiting trial. His one thriving empire, Bad Boy Entertainment, St. John, Sevrock Vodka is in tatters with the lawsuits piling up and his reputation shattered. So the question remains, is this truly the end of Shane Diddy Combs? Will he find a way to escape these allegations and reclaim his throne as the hip hop mogul? Is his legacy forever tarnished? Only time will tell. But do you know that 70.8% of the world visits Pornhub monthly? Who really owns Pornhub? Who is the billionaire behind Pornhub? Click the next video and watch how Pornhub works secretly and its owners are unknown. But today we bring you the truth. For more in-depth stories of power, fame and downfall, subscribe to Afroinvest TV. Keep up with the rise and fall of the world's biggest names. Because sometimes, the higher they rise, the harder they fall. If you are like me, you've seen Pornhub pop up on social media. In 2008, Pornhub was omnipresent. This is a company that does exactly what Facebook does. It's a data harvesting operation. Pornhub, one of the most visited sites on the planet, with over 200 million daily visitors. But behind the clicks and controversy lies a mystery. Who really owns Pornhub? I think we're doing things that nobody has ever done before. We believe in surfacing content that showcases diverse sexual expression, that give people a place, um, a platform to express themselves in ways they wouldn't be able to otherwise. We can be a platform for people who do not have a voice, that 
the work we're doing is a free choice, that the work we're doing is legal, it's consensual, it's performance. Pornhub site cares about getting people mental health